Uh, with more on the latest in the U.S.-China trade fight, joining us now, Florida Senator Rick Scott, uh, our guest host this morning, Larry Bossidy, former Honeywell CEO uh, and a CNBC contributor. When, when they posted 6.2%, uh, we've heard uh, Larry, President Trump, say that's one of the worst numbers uh, in decades already. And now we see this in the journal. Beneath China's stable headline economic numbers, there's a growing belief among economists that it's actually much worse. And they go on to say China's economy isn't tanking, but it's almost certainly weaker than advertised. Some economists say China's GDP numbers could be up to three percentage points lower than 6.2. We've always doubted the, the, the legitimacy of their claim of 6 percent every year, every quarter. And so I don't know what it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a lot lower than advertised. Do you have uh, actual insight into this? Uh, no, Senator? but I mean, look, China could fix this problem. She can do this, stop stealing technology, let the people of Hong Kong have the rights that the, he agreed to. Stop selling fitting on this country. Open up their markets. This is all Xi's problem. He's causing all well, this. Well, okay. That, but I guess my next question was just that, that those are good talking points and, and everything else. But the, the question is, we're, you see what's happening with, with uh, capital spending here. And you see that there at least is the, uh, uh, the notion that corporations and managers, the uncertainty is causing them to pull back a little. We, we're only 2% from the highs in, in, the, in the stock market. But there's, a, there's the idea that both countries are losing in this trade war because there are no winners. Would you say that we're actually getting a leg up from this data and we'll, we'll be in a stronger position to get what we need, Larry, or not? I, I think, Joe, it, it uh, changes day by day as to who, ha who has the leverage and who doesn't. I, I do think it's detrimental to both uh, countries. You, you begin to see it in the softening of our U.S. economy. And the question is, uh, how's it going to get resolved ultimately? And it's necessary, it seems to me, for Trump to have a leg up in terms of the next election to get this behind right. him. And I'm not sure it's easy to do. Senator, would you say we definitely have a leg up? At this well, point? well, I never believe we'll get a deal done. I don't believe I don't believe they're going to change. And so I think this is going to continue on. I don't think Trump will get anything done. Because what you're saying are minor things, are, are massive change. issues from their perspective. They're going to stop stealing technology. They're not going to stop selling the fentanyl. They're not going to, you know, militarize the South China Sea. They're just not going to change. You don't think that both parties are going to claim some type of big... Uh, It'd be nice. Big, and that'd be great. What happens between now and... Okay, so October, we're going back to the... Don't you think they're... If, they, nothing, if nothing's going to change, then, then is this worth it? Right. Oh, absolutely. I, I, there's plenty of American companies that are doing better. They're doing better because they, you know, you, you, you have to be able to buy their products, you know, competing against somebody, you know, with all the tariffs. Yeah, there's plenty of American companies that are getting better, but some companies aren't. I mean, but if you look at this, if we don't fight now, when are we going to fight? I mean, there's going to be short term pain. But it sounds like you're saying there's no you can't win the fight. I, I, you can if she would come around and do something rational. I just what, don't what do you he think will. will cause him to do that? You don't think he will? No. No, well, what's, what's the consequence if there's no deal here? I think the consequences are that there's some American companies that are going to do better, and there's American companies that are going to do worse. But overall, look, our economy is doing better Which American politicians are going to do better and which are going to do worse? <laughs> which politicians are? If, the, if there's is... no deal, you don't think that affects the 2020 uh, presidential election? I mean, look, at our, look at our economy right now. It's, it's, it's continuing to fire on all cylinders. You just talked about Amazon. It's, they're doing it fair because it's hard to get find workers. I mean, we're we're on a roll right now in this country. But, but Senator, that, oh, just one, one issue. You, you said you know it'd be nice if if everybody could come together and just come up with some sort of a deal, even if it's not the structural changes that we're seeking. You'd rather this whole thing just kind of go away. Yeah, that, but only if you can get a deal that's good for the country. Now, in the meantime, whatever we get in tariffs, I think we ought to reduce it in taxes. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't be. This shouldn't be something to add to you know, revenues of the country. We ought to reduce taxes. So, but here's the great conundrum in my mind, which is, to the extent you believe that the trade war and tariffs have slowed our own economy down at all, meaning have, have, have even taken anything off of our growth rate, that's a conundrum for us, right. which is to say that th there was the passing of the tax bill now about a year and a half ago, if not, if not longer, both on corporate taxes and individual taxes. Part of all of that was based on these growth assumptions, which unfortunately are not coming true. Part of, I'm not sure they ever would fully come true, but they're made much harder by approaching it the way we have thus far. And so the question is, do you approach it at all? I'm not suggesting you don't, but maybe there's something to be said about the approach, which is rather than do it as a bilateral uh, effort, would have we been better off if this goes back to TPP or going back to some other approach where you would have had other people join in and maybe could force the issue in a way that you think that yeah, she would won't. actually. Andrew, they just won't. I mean, look, 
I appreciate that Trump is at least standing up for jobs in this country. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing. We're fighting over. Do we want manufacturing in this country or not? Do I believe Europe's going to ever stand up? Um, no, I don't believe they are. So we, we can all say we'd like everybody to come together and kumbaya and go agree what we're going to do. They're just not going to do it. You would say the growth has been, uh, I mean, the way it was just characterized, that, that we did, what, 2.9 percent? Yeah, uh, we're doing way better than we had been. It was about 40 percent above where we were. You can't we find were. workers now. Look at how great this economy is. So everybody acts like, like we must be some problem. I can tell you, if you're any businessman I talk to, they can't find workers. It's great what's going on. Look at Amazon. Look at, it's great what's going on in this country right now. Would I like there not to be a trade war? Yeah, but I'd like them not to keep stealing our technology. Don't sell fentanyl in our country. I mean, they're not going to do it. So, Larry, what happens in October at, at the next round, do you think? Well, I think there's a lot more discussion. It is interesting to see to what extent China is uh, suffering from this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's been well documented. To the extent that they're suffering to a, a large extent, it, they may come to the table. I, I don't think much will come of it. To the senator's point, I think there'll be a point where both teams will declare victory. That's very, what I mean. Very little will change. Yeah. But I think that's within the realm of the possible, and I would think it'd be probably happen early next year. Then do we need to revisit it in the next administration? Absolutely we do. I mean, we've been ripped off by these people. Come on, let's be honest, for years and years. And you're going to have to sustain some pain in order to correct it. But on the other hand, uh, I think we'll make some progress this time. But to your question, I think it's it just the beginning of the next round when this one concludes. So they don't check with you when, like, you don't know... Whether there was a phone call or just overtures to Mnuchin, or you don't know any. Do you know any of the behind the scenes for what well, happened I, a, a week and a half ago? I, mean, I talked to President Trump about it. He's he's optimistic. Yeah. But I mean, I I just I don't. He believe, says China really know, wants to do a deal. China, do you believe him that China really wants to do a deal? Yeah, they'd like he to do it. a deal, but on their terms. I mean, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna agree to stop stealing our technology. That doesn't sound like a very big ask. <laughs> Does it stop I mean, stealing our what, technology? No, it. we're not didn't, going to stop stealing no, your technology. Didn't they in January say they're going to buy our soybeans? Yeah. They couldn't even, that's something and they were simple. It's a commodity too. product. Just buy it. They couldn't even do that. There's nothing they do that they, they ever, they ever got to agree to in the end. Wow. Hmm. All right, Senator. Thank you. I've seen you. You're going, you, you guys are going to have to do something in the fall, I think, right? With, with a couple of these, these yeah, subjects. I, yeah? yeah. You, I, you I, been ready to, to, to do some things? No, it's a pretty dysfunctional place right now. Stuff's not working really well up there. The whole town, I think.